Hi, my name is Jenny Baldwin and I am the elementary math instructional coach for the Georgia Cyber Academy and I wanted to give you an overview of the new math program that we have available for third, fourth, and fifth grades in the elementary school. Right now I'm going to show you an overview of the Math Plus Purple. The purple is for third grade, red is for fourth grade, and yellow is for fifth grade. Each of these grade levels contain the same types of resources. So I'm going to give you an overview with the third grade curriculum, but I will be providing additional information that is content specific per grade level to help you as a learning coach be successful and to provide extra enriching and review activities that may not be always provided in a workbook or online platform. Sometimes providing that eclectic resource and searching from lots of different areas is going to be the best education for your child. So what I want to do is go through Unit 1, Lesson 1, just to show you what you're going to see when you approach these yourself. So as we scroll through the unit, you will see that every Unit 1, Lesson 1 has an online book tour. Please take advantage of this online book tour, although it just does, it gives screenshots. These screenshots will help you immensely understand how to access all of the features of the online book. And I'm going to application share and show you some of those as well. The lesson guide is also available in the activity book. The lesson guide is the learning coach guide and the activity book is the student workbook. And when you open these up, they will be available in different tabs. So if you're a learning coach that may need a little extra support in math yourself and may need to review the lesson guide as your student is working in the activity book, that is not a problem because you can have both tabs open on your computer and you can scroll back and forth from the lesson guide to the activity book. So both of those tabs can be open on your computer. One thing that we are going to highly, highly encourage for third through fifth grade students is a math notebook. Math journaling is very important. Students need to pick up a pencil and they need to be able to write and they need to be able to explain their thinking in math. So getting a composition book or a notebook, um, spiral notebook or even just notebook paper and a binder, any of those are acceptable. But your child will most likely need that. You will not always want or need to print off resources from this activity book but your child will need to be able to write and explain their thinking in math. So I am going to go back to the overview of each session, since this is a generic session for all third through fifth, and you will see that lessons pretty much look the same, but you're gonna see a section called core focus that you've never heard of before. But core focus means that we really want students to learn those foundational key skills that each grade level should learn and that they will be assessed on at the end of the year. The other important part is this extended problems and reasoning. And this is where the learning coach plays a very critical component in helping students understand the math. I know that in the past, there were lots of things maybe graded online that the learning coaches didn't necessarily need to grade or they were easily able to mark off. So I'm going to go to this extended problems and reasoning just to show you a little bit about what you're going to see and how to access this very, very important component. And like I said, this is maybe probably the most important component of the whole unit, and that's why it comes at the very end. Um, it, this particular lesson serves as a tool for you as the learning coach to know whether your child understood those concepts or not. And this is where it's critical for you at this point to also reach out to your homeroom teacher or math teacher to say, my child was not able to answer these problems. Can you invite them to a small group and can you help them use their reasoning skills so that they will be successful on this type of question at the end of the year assessment? So when you go to this tab, as you scroll through, this is the student view. It's going to say there is the math plus lesson guide. It's going to give us give some instructions, but basically it's just going to say go to the math plus lesson guide, go to the table of contents, select the lesson title. It's not going to give a whole lot of 
information that you actually need to be able to do this activity. So I'm going to show you how to get to that activity. Um, it would be very, very easy just to click through, you know, even though the learning coach is supposed to grade it, it would be very, very easy to click through, mark it off, not complete it, but that would be a huge disservice to your student because this is the type of question they will see on the Georgia Milestones Assessment this spring. And we want your child to be successful and we want them to understand that math is not just about answer getting, it's about reasoning. And a lot of us, when we were growing up, it was just about answer getting. It's just get the answer, go through the process. And what we want students to do is understand the conceptual part of it so that when they go through the process, they understand it. It's not just about the product. We don't want kids just to get an answer. We want kids to understand why they got the answer. So when I go to the Math Plus lesson guide, originally when you open it up, this little tab over on the left is gonna be closed. And this is what's gonna appear the very first time you open it up. It's gonna be the learning coach guide. It just shows up as the title page. But you can scroll and type in like for um, lesson one, it does start on page one, coincidentally. And so you can just type in lesson one and it's gonna go right to that whole number sense unit. I think a little bit easier way to navigate this is to go to the, open up this tab on the left, go to the table of contents. It does, here's unit one right here. You can click on that, go down. So if you know your student is working on the first lesson, simply go to this tab and it will give you an overview of that lesson. It will tell you what parts are online, what par parts are offline. It will give you um, the objectives of the lesson. It, different lessons also will tell you what the common misconceptions of that standard are. It will also maybe say, you know, print out. I'm gonna show you how this may or may not be necessary. Most likely it's not gonna be necessary that you print anything out because there all are tools online to answer these questions, but also, like I said, a notebook and a piece of paper, or just a regular piece of paper and a pencil can be just as beneficial because we want students to be just as successful as their counterparts in a brick and mortar environment. So you can go through the lessons here. Now, when you get to this extended problems, the very last lesson, it's gonna say, Supplied, extended problems, reasoning, printout. Extended problems, reasoning, answer sheet, printout. And you may wonder, well, where is that printout? I don't see it here. So all you have to do is go down to resources and go to that very first unit again, and there are the extended problems. And it um, will allow you to save it to your desktop or a file on your computer so you can select whether you want it to save to your desktop or a certain library and you can save it and I've already done that and if I hover over it it says here's the extended problems reasoning here's the extended problems answer key so I'm going to open up exactly what that would look like and here is a third grade example and like I said this isn't the, probably the most important component of the entire unit after you've taught that lesson with your child this shows that they understand or are able to reason with math. So they are presented with a problem. Again, you could print this off by simply clicking the print icon, or you could have your child transfer their answers to a piece of paper. And so this one um, is actually a fifth grade example. And let me see if I can pull up a third grade example here. Here's the third grade example. Um, the students are given a problem dealing with five different students and how they represent a number. So they're supposed to write that number in standard form. After they write the number in standard form, then they are asked to write the digits or the numbers from least to greatest. And then after that, they are given a couple of other examples and scenarios. And you may be wondering, well, I am not great in math myself. I am not certain exactly what they should have answered and what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. The great thing is there is an answer key provided in that lesson guide. So you will be given exactly what is an appropriate answer for each section. There is also a rubric of how to grade something that is more open-ended. 
the testing of our children in the future is going to be a combination of multiple choice and open-ended questions. So we want our students to practice having these constructed responses so that they know that it's not just about randomly selecting an answer. It's about really reasoning with the math, making sense of the math, writing the answer, and then being able to explain it. So those answer keys are going to be provided there for you. So I'm going to go back to the internet and I'm going to go over the activity book. Now again, when your students, if they just click on the activity book, it's just going to open up to that title page. But they will guide you within the lesson say, well, this deals with page 8. So they can go to page 8. And the students don't necessarily have everything that you have access to. They're not going to have access to that extended response because that is something the learning coach will provide to them and the learning coach will grade. Now, if you open up the workbook and you think, well, you know, this is something that they could easily answer just by opening up the workbook, you can let your child use this highlighting tool and highlight the answers. Now, this one is not one of those options. It says, what is 145 rounded to the nearest 10? Explain how you know. What I would do as a learning coach, and we'll get into this more specifically as I go grade, by, grade level by grade level and more content specific, I would encourage them to write that in a math journal. Now, I'm going to go to page number one, which is a different story. Page number one in third grade happened to be something that I could highlight, and you can see I did that here. I said, count by ones, what's the missing number? We have 173, 174, 175, what's next? So it's easy to highlight that answer. But this isn't the only way to teach this same standard. You could get a deck of cards, you could pull out three cards, which could be a two, a seven, and a four. And you could say, okay, what number did I just build? What's the value of the two if I made 274? What's the value of the seven? What's the value of the four? What numbers, what's the next 10 numbers that come after it? What number comes before it? You, this worksheet is an example of the standard that needs to be taught, but it is not the only way to teach that standard. So as a learning coach, a lot of these questions can be done orally or they can be done through a game format. And that's what I'm going to provide when I get more content specific and unit by unit webinars. Now I'm going to continue scrolling through these pages to show you that another option when it is an open-ended question, like this one says, the four is in the what place. So this time I use this little tool right here down at the bottom that is a comment tool. So it's an on-page note and I'm going to click on um, right here it says the two is in the blank place. So I'm going to click on that right there. Hopefully it will open. But you, normally it would open and you would be able, there we go. Um, this one opened up the previous answer and I said this, the six is in the what place and the six is right here so it's in the tens place. So I'm going to save that. We'll see if it will, there we go. It opened this time. The two is in the ones. And so your child can type in the answer, save their answer. And this is another way instead of highlighting that they can answer open-ended questions. But again, you might prefer for them to use a notebook and show their reasoning on a piece of paper. Here's another one where it says count out loud the next 10 numbers. Well, there's no reason to print this out if this is interaction between the learning coach and the student. And you can simply save your answer. So regardless of what grade level your child is in, third through fifth, these are options so that you can highlight and also add comments to type in. I do think that this note section, this notepad, because it provides such a big overview, it kind of covers up the problems. This might be a good place for you as a learning coach to take notes or say, we need to go back and review this, but I wouldn't necessarily encourage my child to use this section since it does cover up so much. Um, you can also view two pages at a time, so you can see side by side and you can kind of get an overview of all the pages by clicking on the last icon and it'll give you um, just an overview of every single page that you can click on. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna close out this and I'm gonna go back to this 
navigator tool. The other thing that you can do is bookmark a page. And so if my child had just finished lesson one, I can add a bookmark and say um, unit one and just simply say, okay. So the next time I open up this lesson guide and maybe it'll take me right to that title page, I can immediately go to this bookmark, click on this, and it will open up to the last page I was at. So it is a great way. You could even just say last page or whatever, and it's going to bookmark where you were so that you don't have to search for that every single time. So the most important things, regardless of what grade level your child is in, the most important things to remember is that this new math, even though it does not have a book, is very updated so that our children can compete with other children and be able to explain their thinking and be as competitive on assessments at the end of the year because we want our students to reason with math and this is the way that we're going to do it by allowing our students to actually think instead of just clicking on multiple choice. If you get lost, you can always go to the table of contents. You can always use the search button. You can go within a chapter, within a book. You can go to the bookmark feature so that you save your place and go right back to where you stopped the last time. And always remember that the resource tab is right here to find those hard to find resources that you may have forgotten where they were or you may not be able to find them. Always check the resource tab because they're likely to be right there. Again, this extended problems and reasoning is something that we as teachers at GCA aren't able to see and you can easily mark them complete without us seeing them. But if, if you don't complete those or you don't let the teacher know that your child is struggling with that, they aren't gonna be able to help your child be successful this year and in years to come. So it isn't a grade on the report card. And so I highly encourage you to do this activity see what your child can know if you are not able to help them and your child is struggling with this section that is when we can invite them to a small group and help them with this section as well our teachers and class connect sessions will be going over problems just like this and we want to help your child be successful so definitely lean on us as an extra support and be looking forward to additional resources and fun games so that you can use an eclectic approach like I mentioned, so that if you prefer a game or you prefer a human number line instead of maybe rounding numbers on a virtual screen, there's lots of opportunities out there for our children to be mathematical thinkers in a variety of different ways. I am looking forward to a great, ma great mathematical year with you and definitely reach out to your homeroom teacher if you have any additional questions. Thank you.